<laughs> yeah. You're going to get in a little copyright infringement. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe three notes. Yeah, I know. Any more than that. It was totally you until that tip of the hat to the Marty Van Halen, oh, yeah, which I love. It just went there. It yeah. just, you know, so there you go. Yeah, that was great. All right. Hey, with Richie Fogner of Judas Priest. Man, Richie, it is great to meet you, man. I love your work. Love your... Great to hear, like, some proper metal shredding right here. Thank you very much, man. At, at painful volume. <laughs> it was, the wedges aren't even on yet, so I mean yeah. that's that's only kind of like a third of the volume. Yeah, yeah. I can just about hear you at the moment. Yeah, years ago. I think a uh, would have a filling knock out of my tooth right then on that first. As it should be. Yeah. As, <laughs> As it should, it be. should be. Man, okay, tell me about. Let's start with this guitar. Uh, well, this is a guitar since I've had since uh, 2011. Right when you when you started. Right when I started, yeah, we realised we needed uh, a, a like a, a Floyd Rose guitar. Uh, I didn't have one at the time. I had, a, I had a couple of Les Pauls and stuff like that. I had an SG, and I didn't want to put a Floyd on a Les Paul. It's too much wood to take sure. out. Um, the SG seemed a bit too thin, and uh, it's Judas Priest. So I thought, yeah. what a great opportunity to right. to put one on a V. Um, and so I asked the guys at Gibson if if they could do me something, and I gave him a gave him a spec, and it wasn't like this originally. It was it had just the, the single scratch plate. It was the 50s shape yeah. and the 50s like half scratch plate. Um, but it was bound, uh, neck, body, head, uh, the block inlays and the EMGs. And I think at the time it was 81, 85 EMGs. Uh, the input jack in the top wing. And that's basically what it was. Uh, and since then, since 2011, I've just been customising it with buckle rash and uh, I've got the, the double scratch plate on it. I was looking for something that kind of gave a different aesthetic, yeah. but also served a purpose as well. So underneath this, all the paint's gone because I used to scratch it off with the, with the cuffs that, you know, sure. yeah. are obligatory with the priest. Yeah, yeah. Um, so not only is it, it sets it apart looks wise, it kind of serves a purpose as well. So um, then I changed the pickups. These are 57, 66 EMGs, um, one volume knob. Um, and that's pretty much it. There's, there's stuff like I didn't want the the diamond on the headstock because Jimi Hendrix didn't have the he had a flying V at the Isle of Wight and right. it just had the Gibson logo, no diamond oh. logo. So I didn't want that on there. Um, so yeah, and uh, as you can see, it's just been worn down over the years. Like High the, miles. Uh, yeah, I mean it's really worn down here. I'm not quite sure what that's from. It's like chains and studs and stuff like that. And the neck's been all worn down. So that's what. That's the main. That's the main V. An ebony fingerboard, right? Ebony fingerboard. Mahogany body. Or mahogany, yep. Um, and that was. I was using it on a song called Halls of Valhalla at the time, and I just thought that was a good idea at the time. Yeah. And, it's, uh, and it stayed on there. Um, got some ring stuff up here from Rings, which which Hendrix had as well. You know. Sure. Locking nut. Um, it's kind of stripped down. It, as I said, it's got, it hasn't got the double volume or tone or anything like that. It's stripped down in some regards. But in other regards, with the Floyd, with the AMG, with the block inlays, it's kind of like a, a souped up version, you know what I mean? So, yeah. And uh, yeah, so I've been using that since I got it. And um, use it, this is the main V, really. That's your number one. That's the number one V. Uh, and this is the one that the signature is based on as well. That's a perfect segue. Let's talk about the signature. Let's get it. Okay, so this is your signature. This is a signature. So this is based on the number one V that I just showed you. And it's pretty much an identical copy. Uh, it's got the double scratch plate, the 57, 66 EMGs, and it's got the, again, it's got the input jack on the wing there. I mean, the, on the other Vs, on the 67 styles, uh, and some of the 50s styles, the input jack's down here. Yeah. So you put it through your strap and you, you've got like a bit of a, a, a lead trail coming here. I just, right. with all the jumping about, I well, don't, do any, don't do so much of anymore, <laughs> getting a bit older, but it's just easier to put it there. It's a lot more streamlined. Yeah, it's out clean. the way. Um, but yeah, apart from that, it's a direct copy. The only difference is on this one, as you saw on the, the Gibson, all the paint has started to come off the back of the neck. And I didn't, you know, it looks a bit unsightly. I'm fine with it. But yeah. uh, someone who's buying a new guitar off the shelf, they might not like that. So we wanted to come up with a way of recreating the feel of the paintless varnished neck, uh, yeah. varnishless neck, but still looking attractive. And, and uh, the master builder came up with a satin idea. Oh, that's great. I mean, ironically, yeah, this one's going shiny because I use it so much. Wow. That's the funny thing. That doesn't but, um, feel like a finish. No, it, originally it was more like this. It was uh, like a, you know, more yeah. matte satin. But because I use it so much, it's starting to get shiny, sure. ironically. But uh, so we did that and it, it works perfectly. 
Um, and so yeah. when your tech hands you a guitar, if you're not looking, can you tell the difference? Yeah, I can tell the difference of all of all of them. I mean, yeah. we had a, I had a couple of 1974 customs. Yeah. Same year and they were totally different. I mean, every guitar in my opinion sure. is different, you know what I mean? So you can always, especially if you're this close to them. If yeah, you're, yeah. You know, you've got a, like, a, um, like a relationship with them. We, yeah. we use them every day on these sort of conditions. You get to know them pretty quickly. So yeah. this is actually a bit heavier um, than the other V. And I've got a, another one of these, which is white, which is slightly lighter than this one. So I can tell. And I've got slightly different, some, the white one has got a slightly more snappier tone. Huh. Um, which is great, They're, all tools are yeah. different and uh, they do different jobs. So, but yeah, that's, that's basically it. And it's got the, the battery compartment in the back, uh, which we had to actually put in the original because that wasn't the original. Right. Um, just for easy, ease of use for the EMG battery to so go in So it there. comes with, your signature comes with those EMGs in there? It comes with the EMGs in yeah. the battery compartment so you can just put the battery in there easily and you're, you're ready to rock again. So yeah, that's that one. That's, that's the, main, the main signature axe that I use. Love that. This was, um, I don't know if anyone's heard it before, but when I joined the band, my name is Faulkner, and it comes from Falconer, and we used to train, fly, and keep falcons back in the day for like dignitaries and royalty and stuff like that, apparently. Really? Yeah, so super cool. Um, I'm actually looking at getting my falconry license, so I can do the <laughs> really? same just to carry on the tradition. Yeah, yeah. That's great. But Rob Halford picked up on the name, and he said oh, he wants to call me the falcon because of that <laughs> reference. And um, so it's, I've just kind of used that really as, oh, a, that's great. as a little bit of a little bit of a trademark, and it's it's on picks. I've got it. Uh, I think I've got it. Ironically, not that one. <laughs> <laughs> I've, got it, I've had it on picks and you know clothes like uh, you, set uh, tour jackets and stuff like that. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's just become a regular thing. That's great, man. What a what a cool reference. Yeah, and it, it came from him as well, so it was organic. That makes and, it all the cooler. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And also, it's got the uh, the Priest logo at the top there, next to the Epiphone logo. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's, if anyone wasn't aware, it's Judas Priest, but yeah. you know what I mean? But, they're uh, aware. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, if they're buying that guitar, they're aware. Yeah. yeah. And the V's always been a part of the Priest heritage, you know, with KK Downing. Totally. I've always been a Michael Schenker fan, yeah. KK fan, Randy Rhodes, Zach played a V, you know, there's loads Hendrix. of people. Yeah. Hendrix, Hetfield, yeah. Kirk Amit, you know, all those guys. So yeah. it was a perfect opportunity, really, to... to yeah to stretch your wings of the V, you know what I mean? Yeah, 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 too cool.